juicy, delicious burgers, ice cold brews, mouth watering barbecue. My three favorite food groups. Tonight, I'm taking you to places cooking up some of my favorite foods with tasty twists. We'll start in Hell's Kitchen, New York, where I brave the spiciest burger in all of Manhattan. Wah, 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 wah. Hey, um. Then in Nashville, I dig into some southern comfort food with a brand new twist. It takes those great flavors and just amps them to like a thousand. And lastly, we'll head to Northeast Ohio for ribs with a twist I didn't even know was possible. Ribs with no bones? I'm Michael Simon, and I'm traveling the country to show you the best burgers, brew, Q, and everything in between. <laughs> Join me for Burgers, Brew, and Q. Anyone who knows me knows I am always in search of some of the best and most unique burgers. So I've been asking burger lovers all over the Big Apple, where can I get the best, most spicy burger in New York City? They all said you got to check out Island Burgers and Shakes. Nestled in Hell's Kitchen, their signature napalm burgers got a fiery twist. They crank up the heat with four different levels of spices and peppers to really blow your hair back. Let's see what they got. Hey! Good to Jack see you. Simon, How are you doing? Very well. Good it is good. How long have you guys been here? Almost 20 years. That's an unbelievable run for a yeah, restaurant. Yeah. 20 years ago, we couldn't find a good burger outside of going way downtown to like right. some of the famous places. So we said, wouldn't it be great if we could do the kind of burger that you get in the backyard on the 4th of July. Kind on the grill, burger. you get the char markings on it. Our imaginations just start to fly. And currently, there are 64 ways you can get that burger. Well, the thing that everybody has told me about is the napalm burger. Perfect, it's the hottest burger. Let's do it. I'm ready. All, All right. right. Sounds good. What gives this burger a twist is they bring the heat in not one, not two, not three, but four different ways. <laughs> I love burgers doing it right. Tasty, spicy, so good. It's amazing. All right, show me what makes this napalm burger tick. I start with a 85-15 cut. Okay. Uh, brisket and chuck. All right. The fat content from the brisket will make this burger extra juicy. This is our blackening powder, but it has dried coriander, garlic powder, pepperoncino, onion powder, cayenne pepper, of course. Woo! All right, it's got a little kick to it. Yeah. Is this our cast iron pan? On a cast iron pan, you get that great char. It really kind of just sets Absolutely. the whole thing off. So I'm just going to cover it. So that's going to cook for about five minutes and get all juicy. Oh, man. This is the key to happiness. The burger has got that great char on it from the cast iron pan. Really seals in all those great blackening spices. So tell me a little bit about this barbecue sauce. We go, we go spicy. I like to use tomato sauce, chili sauce. Sauce, hickory, molasses, Tabasco, pepperoncino. All right, two big tablespoons. Finish it off with some white cheddar. Very nice. Now cover it. Let it melt. Oh, oh that's ready. Oh, yeah, baby. The cheese is kind of running down the side. That barbecue sauce is locked in under it. I see a container of habaneros sitting there exactly. ready to go. These habaneros will create the spread that really make this napalm burger explode. We have to de-seed them. What we do is you have to you actually use double gloves, because that's how strong those seeds are. <laughs> yes. And then make sure you don't touch anything. Uh, no, yeah. You, you know what I mean. I know what you mean. After we de-seed it, we cook it down in about 10, 15 minutes. We're going to add about three to four cloves of garlic and a shallot chopped in half. Here's what it looks like after we uh, All right, strain so it. 15 minutes, you simmer them so they get nice and tender. Exactly. And it actually pulls a touch of the heat out. Sure. Let's check out how you make the puree with this right. habanero. You got a it. A little bit of cilantro. Yeah. A little black pepper. A little touch of oil. All right. That's ready to go. You can smell the heat. Oh, my God. This is what really makes it napalm. Absolutely. No? Oh, absolutely. All right. Oh, yeah. You get it right in the back. It's got that great fruity heat that habaneros bring. Wow. It's, it's spectacular. Glad you like it. Very hot. Now we put the uh, schmear. The schmear. Of hot habanero sauce. Good, generous portion. Beautiful. I schmear good for a guy from Cleveland. And then we add the jalapenos. And that's the fourth and final level of heat. I'm building the perfect beast. 
that is the Island Burger Napalm. We got the layers, the habanero hot sauce, the layer of jalapenos, the cheese, the barbecue sauce, onions, tomato, a little bit of romaine lettuce, sesame seed bun. Time for the napalm. Kicks in now. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Wow, it's delicious, but it has earned its name. It is hot. Man, so many times you go, you take a bite of something supposed to be spicy, it's not spicy. This is spicy. <laughs> the sliced jalapenos really put it over. But I still taste the beef of the burger. The cheese is perfect. It is fantastic. Wow. <laughs> They have some sorcerers in the kitchen. I just got a uh, regular cheeseburger, and so far it's very good. It's very juicy. It has very good texture. Nice. You do you watch a lot of Food Network. <laughs> I'm impressed. I had a napalm. Did you come here often and get that? All the time. You're twice the man I am. I wish I could be you. That scorching napalm burger has my mouth sizzling. Good thing for me, Island has the perfect sweet antidote to cool things down. My mouth is on fire in the most pleasant of ways. Okay. So I need you to show me how to make this black and white mold. You bet. The big difference between a shake and a malt is the malt powder, which enhances the flavor of the ingredients to create a smoother, richer taste. We have the ice cream in here. It's French-style vanilla, which okay. has a higher fat content, more flavor. We love them thick, so a lot of ice cream, a little less milk, and this is ready to pour out. And we got our malt powder. Okay, so a healthy yes. dose of that. Oh, so yeah, I love the crunch, you know? Okay. Now, we're gonna coat the glass. Just a good dark chocolate syrup. Exactly. We'll add the malt. Oh. Oh, yeah, baby. It doesn't pour it glugs. It's almost like a sundae in a glass. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's got everything. It has that great malty flavor. It's a nice, fatty vanilla ice oh, cream yeah. chocolate syrup. It's a little bit sweet. After you crush a napalm burger, it is imperative that you have a molten shake to smooth it out. This is perfect. So when I go to Island Burgers and Shakes, this is my Simon Says, the napalm burger that will burn your mouth in the best of ways. And then I finish it off with a sweet and cooling black and white malt. Oh, yeah. So, so hot. Coming up. I tackle a taco with a belly-busting twist. It's an enhancer, not a decreaser. And then a perfect Southern Comfort Classic. You can see it's getting those nice golden ridges. I like ridges! Here in Nashville, lots of places offer great Southern Comfort Classics. But at Acme Feed and Seed, owner Tom Morales and his daughters Kendall and Lorne not only make classics like mouth-watering chicken fried steak, but they also give traditional food a tasty twist. And the beer list, it is fantastic and driven by Nashville itself. Hold on, how are you? <laughs> I'm good to see you. Lorne, how are you? This is just a spectacular space. This was built in 1882, wow. and it was a feed and seed for about 70 years. You know, back then, it was a social center. This was where a everybody lot of, came. A lot of things within the town happened here. Right. It's also really important to his family growing up. They would come and do the dog dips here. But what's it? Is it dog? <laughs> it's it. <laughs> for fleas. I, fleas. All right. <laughs> Did they dip the kids in, too? <laughs> no, that's, that's it. Oh, like that. If you don't behave. You're getting it done. <laughs> I true. love it. Yeah. Absolutely. So, but the big box stores have taken it all away. But right. This was where everybody of, came. To me, Nashville's so magical because, like, there's this great connection between the people that live here and the music that's played here and the food that's cooked here. Very emotional experiences, food and music. Right. We're catching up on the food scene. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> The food scene here is great. 
We're locals, so we love our comfort food, our southern food, fried chicken. But having a Dominican and Haitian background, we wanted to put a little bit of an international flair in the foods. And their chef, Matt Farley, excels in creating both their classic and their innovative dishes. We collaborate like songwriters. We might have an idea, and Matt figures out how to execute it. Maybe you have the lyrics, he has the music. And what puts this place over the top? Their outstanding beer selection. We have 28 beers on tap. Awesome. And, and a lot from Nashville. A lot from Nashville. To beer, delicious food in Nashville. Let's get back in the kitchen. And I'll Perfect. make sure I bring out back some beers to pair up oh, with it. Oh, see that? <laughs> you raised them right. There you go. <laughs> Let's go. What makes Acme so great is they put their unique international twist on the classics, like taking southern pulled pork and combining it with Mexican and Asian flavors. And they're amazing. Wonderful. I love she doesn't this. even want to talk to you. She's so wrapped up in the beer belly taco. I got to see these beer belly tacos as someone who is very proud of his belly. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's made with pulled pork. So you guys are using pork shoulder butt. Yep. Smoking it for how long? 18 hours. 18 hours. Yep. What's the wood? Hickory. What's this with a pickled carrot and daikon and cucumbers. What's the inspiration for these flavors? Well, I love to eat banh mi sandwiches. Oh, the best, right? Yeah. A banh mi is a Vietnamese sandwich using these same toppings inside a baguette. We wanted to do tacos, so I figured I would mash the two together, have a little bit of a different dish. A white corn tortilla. The key to the start of a great taco is a corn tortilla. A lot of people use flour, I know, but like a good corn tortilla made with masa, Man, that's that's really what makes it happen. This is like a sweet chili that we add chili garlic paste and lime juice to. Similar to pork. Mm. You never really get tired of pork, but I got to admit. No, oh, yeah, me either. <laughs> then we got the pickles. So the pickles are going to add that kind of acidic, crunched cucumbers, which is going to give it more texture, but also very fresh, light flavor. We're moving now. Oh, there we go. So I'm gonna put some cilantro sprigs on it. One of the great things about cilantro with the bottom me is it gives it that kind of floral notes. Yeah. Really bright and light. These are all awesome condiments for pork. Is there anything that comes with this dish? Yeah, we're gonna make some Mexican street corn. Oh, I love that. We blanch it in salted water and then throw it on here. Just gets a nice char on it. Yeah. And we're gonna put some lime aioli on it. And that's one to give it flavor, it gives it fat and acidity, but two to make the cheese stick. So we have patija cheese. It's a Mexican cheese that's really hard and dry, salty. It feels like a Mexican feta. Yeah. As a Greek boy, you know, yeah. I eat feta as a child. So this, to me, is very similar. And then we're gonna add some cayenne pepper to that. Just to give it a little bite. All right, well, let's see. Oh, this looks super balanced, kind of light. All these different great flavors in there. So are these gonna give me a beer belly or eliminate my beer belly? We're eating too it's, many of them. Maybe. Oh, it's an enhancer, not a decreaser. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's amazing that you could take something as rich as a pork butt and really lighten up the flavor because of those pickles, because of the cilantro, because of that cucumber. And the sauce is perfect. It's sweet and spicy. Oh, yeah. It's working for me. Let's try that Mexican street corn. My favorite way to eat corn. It takes those great flavors that you ate in your backyard as a kid and just amps them to like a thousand. You get the richness from the mayonnaise, the saltiness from the cheese, that little chili kick. It's, it's perfection. Coming up, I drench my comfort food Southern style and pair it with a perfect beer. I love whenever I take a bite of food and beer comes. And an innovative pit master makes ribs without bones? Now you're just showing off. Yeah. <laughs> Here at Acme in Nashville, I just made their Asian-influenced beer belly taco appetizer. And now I'm ready for an ice-cold beer. And what goes better with that than their classic chicken fried steak? Love well, this place. Very Excellent. good. Excellent. Yeah, I gotta try this. Take a couple years off my life, but, <laughs> but I'll still eat it. But I came in here today, I had a full head of hair, and I was 145 pounds. <laughs> chicken fried steak. The Texas classic. Obviously, chicken fried steak is not chicken at all. Well, it's fried like chicken. Take me through the paces. I'm ready. Pretty simple. We got some cube steaks here, salt and pepper. With the cube steaks, you're just cutting them thin and pounding them a little bit to yep. tenderize them. What cut of the animal is it? It's a sirloin. I'm going to dredge in flour. This next one is buttermilk and egg. The breading that we use is equal parts cracker meal and all-purpose flour and salt and pepper. So the cracker meal is just working as like the breadcrumbs would if you were making a 
veal parmesan yeah, or something. Or schnitzel or, or schnitzel, whatever. Schnitzel, yeah. yep. Now we got some canola oil here. Is chicken fried steak, is the meat cooked all the way through, or is it like pink in the center? What's Generally, the it's process? cooked all the way through. So you're about a minute and a half per side? That's it. Oh, and you can see it's getting those nice little golden ridges around the edge, and that's really what you want. Oh, yeah. And the ridges are going to hold the gravy. I like ridges! If you pound that meat the right thickness, yep. and your oil's the right heat, and the breading is correct, you know it's going to be about a minute and a half a side. These are twice cooked fries, a little bit of kosher salt. Yep. Where do I put the meat? Right on top of that. Guy. Right on top? Yeah. Oh my God, these are going to be like the greatest gravy fries ever. <laughs> All right, so the gravy, butter, flour, salt, pepper. Milk. That's it. Oh, look at that. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like it all together. The gravy is, again, simple but rich, and it just works all together. You really taste the beef. You get that great texture from the crusting on the outside of the beef. And the gravy, just really simple, just wraps the whole thing together with the fries. It's good. Good old-fashioned comfort food. Now y'all got to try it with this. Oh, This beer. is going to be a dark Belgium ale, and it's going to pair up really nicely with chicken fried steak. I love whenever I take a bite of food and beer comes. And beer, it's the best. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Black Abbey Dark Ale is perfect with the chicken fried steak. It's a little caramely, it has some like raisin notes to it, slightly bitter, kind of cuts through the fat and the deliciousness that is chicken fried steak. This is a perfect pairing. <laughs> you guys you. make a good team. <laughs> Here's my Simon Says Meal and Acme Feed and Seed. I start with an appetizer of beer belly tacos. 18-hour smoked pulled pork, complemented with those Asian-inspired toppings and a side of sweet and savory Mexican street corn. And for the entree, the classic chicken fried steak. Crunchy, meaty, and drowning in that delicious gravy. And I wash it all down with a sweet and slightly bitter Black Abbey Dark Ale. Acme Feed Seed, Southern Comfort with a twist. For my next stop, we are at NFL legend Al Bubba Baker's barbecue joint, Bubba's Q. Bubba grew up down south where barbecue was the family business. And he was the first to bring real smoked barbecue to Northeastern Ohio, here in the town of Avon. When his wife refused to eat his ribs because she doesn't like getting her hands messy, he had to get creative. Ribs with no bones? Hi, what's up, man? It is great, good man. to see you. How's it going? It's going great. Hey, I'd like you to meet the family. I would love to see everybody. Uh, this is my grandbaby, Priscilla, Brittany, yep. Jane, my brother-in-law, Calvert, and of course, the mother of the D-bone, <laughs> baby back ribs. There you go. Yeah. How did you turn from all pro defensive end to barbecue man? Football was my job. Barbecue is my passion. But we're here today to talk about the boneless barbecue, which is your passion. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Behind every great man Absolutely. is a much smarter woman. <laughs> what I love about Bubba is he makes everyone who walks through these doors feel like family. Bubba, very personable, very friendly. It feels like home. But what I love about his world famous boneless ribs is they have all the flavor of a regular rib. He gets the flavor by smoking them the traditional way with bones in. How long do they go in? So I cook at a very high temperature, 290, for two hours and 15 minutes. Now, Bubba, these ribs are delicious. OK. Well, how do you get the bones out of these things? If I tell you, I got to kill you. <laughs> Before I die. OK. I'm going to try well, that, that's out. a good proposition. Before I die, I have to get a little more okay. information. So where'd you come up with the idea of the boneless rib? It was Never. actually my wife. Oh, well, there you go. She thinks that eating with your hands mm -hmm. and having right. the juice between your fingers, she would never do that. And that was the impetus for the boneless rib. I won my wife over with, with a barbecue item. Right. It's a barbecue love story. All right, you ready to get these inside? Let me grab one here, and we're going to put it through the process of deboning it. But you can't come. Oh, man. 
Behind these closed doors, they're using a top secret deboning process. And despite what Bubba says, it's still my mission to get in there to see how they do it. It just melted in my mouth. Like, I didn't even have to chew. It's just good. That's unbelievable. <laughs> This is what this entire uh, building is about. This boneless rib was made out of love. Tell me what's in the barbecue sauce. Water, onion powder, garlic powder, chili powder, brown sugar, right. Worcestershire. So you got 12 ingredients in this item. I want to cut you a piece, and this is my favorite thing to do. Cut it down the middle. Wow. In my whole life, I've never seen a rib being cut like a steak. Now you're just showing off. Yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, it's so moist. It's caramelized from that sweet sauce. It's tender. It still has that smoke ring. It's everything you would expect in a rib without the bones. I need to know how you make them. I mean, the word on the street is you lost the step. I think maybe I can beat you to the room. I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you an opportunity to get into the kitchen. Really? Yeah. All right, we're getting in. Come on. <laughs> Coming up, Bubba's got a surprise waiting for me in his secret kitchen. And then he shows me a high on the hog version of a childhood favorite. It's like That's putting high heels on a pig. <laughs> I'm at Bubba's Q, where I feasted on his traditional ribs. But his big twist here is the patented deboned baby back rib stick. Now he's allowing me to be the first person outside his family to get a peek inside his secret deboning room. I got a surprise for him. Oh, hey, guys, what's going on? You got to bring a couple linemen from the Browns to protect the ribs. <laughs> yeah, what, was your, Al, what was your best move? Run over. Powering past pro players may not be my specialty, so I'm not going to get to find out the secret. But at least I get to sit down with the NFL players and share these amazing boneless baby back ribs. These are fantastic. They're obviously incredibly tender. You don't even need the knife. They just fall apart. Yeah, they're just breaking up. Tastes good. Just enough smoke for me. I, I really enjoy it. You know, as a pass rusher, Michael makes a great chef. <laughs> Not only are those ribs special, their pork packed potato is another brilliant twist on a classic. This is called the barbecue baker. Correct. Tell me a little bit about this. So my mother was a working woman. She never prepared meals. She'd always have potatoes. And what me and my brothers learned to do as kids, we would put the potato in the oven and we would bake it off and we'd take ground beef, and in this case, we upgraded it to pulled pork. <laughs> so this is smoke. Yeah, this is your grown-up version of it. Yeah, absolutely. How long that can smoke? 18 hours. Oh, man. So then you take some cheese, you can never put on too much cheese. <laughs> and then we take the barbecue sauce. Ooh. Chef, you want to put that in the oven? 400-degree oven, so all that caramelization happens. So, Michael, oh, yeah. and this is what comes out. And you get that little edge oh, yeah, around I see that. Edge. Yeah, I like see it. Finish it with some scallion. You see, it's not just a baked potato. Oh, no. It's got that crisp. To got, hear it it's crackling. got texture to it. Wow. You get the sweetness from the barbecue sauce, that nice, subtle caramelization that happened in that hot oven. Delicious. You know, this is the high off the hog version yeah. of, a, of a childhood necessity. It's like right. putting high heels on a pig. <laughs> this is my Simon Says meal at Bubba's Q. First off, the star of the show, the D-Bone Baby Back Rib Steak. A perfectly smoked slab of ribs you can eat with a knife and fork. Then, I like to move over to the barbecue baker. A baked potato stuffed with smoky pulled pork, creamy cheddar cheese, and Bubba's sweet and spicy barbecue sauce. It is his love affair with food and his love of family that makes this place so magical.